right? Headline number one, the Federal Trade Commission and attorneys general from 17 states on Tuesday sued Amazon alleging anti-competitive practices. According to Retail Dive, the FTC chair, Lena Khan, said in a statement, quote, the complaint sets forth detailed allegations noting how Amazon is now exploiting its monopoly power to enrich itself while raising prices and degrading service for the tens of millions of American families who shop on its platform and the hundreds of thousands of businesses that rely on Amazon to reach them, end quote. Amazon tactics the uh, FTC describes as problematic include replacing relevant organic search results with paid advertisements and prioritizing its own products above items that it knows are superior, along with what the FTC calls anti-discounting measures, including a practice of pushing sellers down search results if they offer lower prices elsewhere compared to what they advertise on Amazon, including on their own websites. Uh, John, we're going to go to you first here. Is there merit to this lawsuit? I feel like we are always hearing about companies complaining about Amazon, consumers complaining about Amazon because of this topic. But if if this there is merit to this, what does it mean for the retail industry more broadly? Yeah, I, I think there's kind of lots of different angles and layers to this, yeah. which is super interesting. Um, and, and I will also, I think it's it's also important for me to note I'm not a, an FTC expert, right? But <laughs> from my per, from my perspective, I think the hits keep coming for Amazon. Really, is is the first point here. They're kind of mm-hmm. getting it from all angles at the moment. Um, I don't know if it's as big a topic as it once was because there's now more competition against Amazon than there was even six or nine months ago, right? If we right. think about, yeah. for, exa- for example, Timu, which is now mm-hmm. basically cutting out Amazon in the middle and coming directly to consumers. And yeah. that is now the most downloaded app in the app store this year. So it's a huge um, push from that perspective to customers. So so I think the more the more interesting point for me about whether this has merit or not is that it's a continuation of the FTC and how they're getting more aggressive on what they're terming monopolistic practices, right? So so obviously this is a big decision with the state's attorney generals um, supporting it too, and they have a huge decision coming down the track with Kroger Albertsons as well. Mm-hmm. So I think the FTC are really doubling down on this idea that they're protecting the consumer. And that's very interesting for the retail industry more broadly of how they approach things, because it is a bit of a shift in mindset towards making sure the consumer is at the center of decisions and that they're getting the best deals. And I think you're going to see more and more activity in this space from the FTC, not just to prevent monopolistic practices, but to put the consumer at the center of this and make sure that everyone's getting a fair deal. Yeah, Kelly, I see you dying along. Anything you'd you'd add into what John just outlined? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be so interesting to see how this plays out. And again, in my non-legal opinion, I think there's really two things they have to prove here. You know, are they unreasonably excluding other companies and impairing their ability to compete? I think there's a lot of grounds and merit there and things to investigate. But Mm -hmm. the question of is Amazon creating a worse experience for the consumer? I'm really curious to see how they prove that out in particular. Um, I think that they've really created such a new space for the consumer here. So, yeah. uh, you know, are they actually making my experience worse when I'm getting a easy Amazon basics product top of my feed? No hassle. I don't know. I'm curious to right. see how it plays out. Right. Chris, I want to hear what your yeah. perspective is because I, I, I mean, I'm curious, like uh-huh. this is Amazon. What, what happens if like back in the day you tried to do this at Target or, yeah. at, you know, if somebody tried to do this at Walmart, like what would that look like? Yeah. I'm not an FTC expert, but I, yeah, no, I am a retail expert and I am kind of a merchandising expert too. having spent 20 years in merchandising too. I and- feel like we need a disclaimer, like running across the bottom of this. <laughs> right, like, right. This is not legal <laughs> advice. Not this is not an FTC expert speaking, but yeah. hypothetically, but I, Chris. But, just, I, but just, I think that- just, I think, shooting from the hip, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, yeah. Hey, boo, boo, boo. But, you know, I think, I think, I think there is merit here. And I think you can get into gray areas between like, what is monopoly power versus what is just not legal. And to me, the there's merit because, and I've said this on this show before. And so I was, I was pleased to really see it come out blatantly in the FTC statement. Mm-hmm. And it comes down to the price fix, price fixing that's potentially going yeah. on here. And then that is by punishing vendors based on the prices they're selling things at competitive retailers, or like you said, and even on their own websites, mm-hmm. because that is a number one fresh out of fresh buyer off the boat and buyer training the first thing they tell you not to do as a buyer your day one of 
of learning how to do merchandising. You can't have those kinds of conversations. So to your question at Target, like if I was like compelling my towel vendors in my first buyer job to be like, hey, I don't want you putting the price of these competitive towels that you're selling to Walmart at, you know, $4, I right. would lose my freaking job. Yeah. And so I went on the web, I went on the FTC website today to see how do they define price fixing so everyone can understand that. Cause I think it's really interesting. And here it is, it's quote, illegal price fixing occurs when whenever two or more competitors agree to take actions to raise, lower, maintain, or stabilize the price of any product or service. Price fixing schemes are often worked out in secret and can be hard to uncover, but an agreement can be discovered from quote circumstantial evidence, end quote, fully. Um so like that's essentially when you read it, how they were working their website and demanding and placing products based on the what they were seeing as the competitive pricing position of these sellers on their site. In a lot of ways, it feels like that is happening to me. And so that's why I am curious where this goes in the long run. But what do you think, Ann? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a lot of questions that I have here. And I think it also comes down to the consumer, um, which is the the consumer you and I, but then also the SMBs that are on the platform too. And I'm kind of resetting expectations for the customer as well. Like, you know, their Amazon's defense here is like, well, they're preventing us from getting fast delivery to our consumers because, you know, like this FTC ban would or would force them to change the way that they're doing operations it for it, it's higher prices for the consumers like i i think that this is not quite their defense is not quite strong here when it comes to those key items like you know reduced options like there's no that you're not reducing options there's more marketplaces right now that sellers have than ever like there's other opportunities and even you know d2c brands on their own websites have better opportunities if this is not in place so i think that there's a lot here that still needs to be ironed out. But ultimately, I think it gets back to what John said at the beginning here is that we need to establish a precedent for the other retailers that are coming into this space, TikTok, um, Shein, like all these other big marketplaces that are coming in here, whatever is happening here, as Amazon typically does, will set the stage for how those are managed going forward. It's a great point to close on. Yes, the rules of the road in regards to marketplaces, both from this angle, from you know preventing theft and organized crime, have to be reevaluated pretty quickly.